Good morning, everyone. Um, uh, thank you very much for joining our data science series um, today. So um, uh, today we uh, we have. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce um, our uh, speaker, uh, Man Nan Du. Uh, Man Nan Du is a PhD candidate at uh, in computer science at the Texas A&M uh, University, and. Uh, Mannan research interests uh, focus on trustworthy machine learning, especially, you know, explain, explainability, fairs, and robust um, uh, deep neural networks. And, uh, and uh, Mannan has published many papers as leading venues like Nerith KDD, Triple AI, um, um, uh, Dup, 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 uh, with uh, several uh, best uh, uh, paper candidate um, list, right, short list, and the um, uh, also uh, uh, graduate research excellence award uh, in 20, um, 2020. Yeah. So um, so yeah. Um, now the podium is your and uh, uh, please uh, present your excellent uh, work. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Fine, for the introduction. So hello everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Munan Du. Today I want to uh, introduce uh, my research on deep neural network explainability, focusing on two aspects of explainability, including its algorithms as well as its applications. So nowadays we are at the moment of AI revolution since it has taken over almost everything. For example, we can make use of reinforcement learning for playing Go, we can use uh, many variants of deep neural network for medical diagnosis. We can also use convolutional neural network for seeing and standing in the scenario of self-driving cars. And lastly, uh, many deep neural networks can also be used for voice recognition in smart speakers, such as for Amazon Alexa. So despite all the superior performance for deep neural networks, uh, these uh, deep neural networks are typically regarded as blank boxes, since uh, this model can't provide a meaningful explanation on how specific prediction is made. So we are wondering what have been learned inside the deep models. In order to uh, tackle this blank box problem, the explainability of deep neural network would be an effective tool. For example, we have multi-layer perceptron MLP, we have convolutional neural network, same model. We have also the recurrent neural network R model. For many kinds of these uh, deep neural networks, the goal of explainability is to enable us to explain the behavior of these blank box deep models in understandable terms to us humans. So what does it mean for understandable terms? I will introduce later uh, in the following slides. So we can compare the traditional deep learning pipeline with the explainable deep learning pipeline. In the first row, this is the traditional deep learning pipeline. So given I input this is an image to the machine learning model. The model will give us the model the prediction. This is a Husky, as well as the confidence score probability equals a 0 0.93. Uh, in contrast, the second row is the explainable deep learning pipeline. Not only the machine learning model will give us the prediction, this is a Husky, but also it will show us the explanation for this prediction. This is a husky because of the airs, the hairs, and the uh, base. And uh, it will output all the information to end users. So why do we need the uh, explainability? So on one hand, explanations are beneficial to end users. The provided explanation from the deep neural network can increase the trust and the transparency of, uh, from the end users to the deployed deep neural network system. On the other hand, from the perspective of researchers and developers, 
the generated explanation could help them to diagnose the model, especially when the model gives some more wrong predictions. The insights uh, from the explanation could help the researchers and developers to figure out solutions to improve the model. So in this talk, I will focus on two aspects of explainability. In the first part of the talk, I will introduce the explainability algorithms, including how can we generate a post hoc explanation or predictions made by two standard DM testers, including the convolutional neural network as well as the recurrent neural network. In the second part of the talk, I will introduce the applications of explainability. How can we make use of explainability and debugging to, to improve the performance of the deep neural networks? So for the first part, the explainability algorithms. It is a challenging task to provide an explanation for predictions made by the D models. So the first challenge is how can we generate explanations that are understandable to us humans? So what does it mean for understandable to humans? So consider an input. This is an image in figure A. So after feeding this input uh, image to the uh, same model, the model could give us the prediction cartoon flaw. So based on this model prediction, we can generate uh, different kinds of explanations. For example, we can generate an explanation B and C in explanation in figure B. This heat map will mostly highlight some of the background pixels. This kind of explanation is less understandable to us humans. In contrast, uh, for explanations in figure C, it could highlight both the dominant blur in the center of the image, as well as the smaller one in the bottom right corner. And uh, the explanation in figure C is more understandable to us humans. However, uh, sometimes in many cases, only understandable to humans is not sufficient. We also need to guarantee that the generated explanations are faithful to the original deep neural network. Most existing post hoc explanation, they follow the philosophy of local approximation. The idea is that also globally, this uh, deep neural network is a highly nonlinear uh, blank force model, but at the local a neighborhood of one specific instance, we can approximate its behavior using a local model, and uh, this could be a local linear model. Uh, and then we can uh, take out the weight from the local linear model as explanation for this specific input. However, uh, in many cases, uh, even the local behavior around the one specific instance is also not uh, linear, and uh, sometimes the local approximation could uh, uh, not be sufficiently accurate. As a result, the generated uh, explanation might not be faithful to the decision making process of the original uh, deep learning model. So, in order to generate a more understandable and a more faithful explanation, we take a modification, uh, motivation from information bottleneck principle. So here, consider the input x. After feeding this input x to the uh, deep learning model, uh, the key observation is that the hierarchical representations and the intermediate layers for the deep neural network could correspond to the uh, structure transition along the information curve. So we can model the information following process through the deeper neural network model in order to get a more feasible and a more understandable explanation. 
So I will introduce how can we generate a feasible and understandable explanation for predictions made by the convolutional neural network. So consider we have a pre-trained convolutional neural network. So we have also one specific input image. After uh, giving the input image to the same model, the model will output the prediction. Uh, this is a softmax probability vector. Here the elephant has the confidence of 0 0.74. And the zebra has the confidence of 24%. Will for other categories, the confidence is 2% in total. <clears throat> the goal of explanation is to find out the evidence that could support the model prediction elephant. The final model explanation will be illustrated in the format of a heat map where a deep red color indicates a higher contribution score for the model prediction. We want to model the information flowing process through the same model in order to derive more feasible explanation. So the key observation from the information flowing process is that until the intermediate layers, only the important information is preserved for prediction. For example, the foreground object information will some of the unimportant information will be discarded, such as the background uh, pixels. So based on this observation, we propose a guided feature inversion framework. So we have two branches of input. So in the left branch, uh, we will fade the original image as A to the pre-trained same model. In the right branch, we will fade the guided uh, input uh, theta to the uh, pre-trained same model. Here for both left and right branch, uh, these two same model are the same model. We uh, propose two losses the inversion loss as well as the target loss in order to derive explanation. And I will introduce uh, these two loss in the following slides. So the key idea is to uh, make use of guided feature inversion. So we have the original input XA. We also want to find out another inverted input theta XAM. Here, the inverted input of theta XAM is the linear combination of the original input XA as well as the noise input P. Uh, and we use the weight matrix M as the linear weight. So we will fit both original input XA as well as the inverted input theta XAM to the pre-trained same model. And we want the same model to give a similar representation for these two kinds of inputs. So in this way, we can save the important information in the weight matrix M. And within the inversion loss, we have the, also the second term, uh, the summation of the interest within M. So this term, uh, the goal is to limit the area of the weight matrix M. Uh, and such, uh, we want to keep as uh, smaller information as possible uh, to keep the most important information in the weight matrix M. And uh, if we only use get the feature inversion, there is also one problem. So the generated explanation by get the feature inversion will highlight uh, all the foreground objects. For example, for this input image, it will highlight the uh, elephant and zebra. Our ultimate goal is to generate class uh, discriminative explanation. Uh, for example, for this uh, image, for elephant, we have the prediction confidence of 74%. Uh, 
and for Zebra, it has confidence of 24%. We want to generate explanation for elephant and Zebra uh, respectively. In order to achieve this goal, we have another loss function, the target loss. So the idea is that we want the input input theta SAM to highlight the target neuron in the output layer. Here, capital C denotes the uh, dimension for the target neuron for the target class, and the capital L means the last layer. We will, at the same time, we want the background part of the inverting input uh, theta VJ to summarize uh, the information uh, to summarize the activation for the target neuron in the output layer. In this way, we can generate explanations for uh, each uh, specific category respectively. For example, for elephant, we can generate uh, the explanation hidden map, which could highlight the height and uh, the airs for the elephant. And for zebra, we have the explanation hidden map, which could highlight the black and the red strips of the uh, zebra. So we conduct a series of uh, experiments, and we compare the explanation uh, by all proposed methods with five baseline methods. And uh, we show two examples. In the uh, first example, this is a scale uh, image, and the second column are the explanation by all proposed methods. While the rest of five columns are the heat maps generated by the comparing baselines. <clears throat> we can see that uh, all proposed methods, the generated heat map to the highlight the helmet the scale and the scale pool. And uh, uh, in contrast, <coughs> many of the baseline methods, uh, they are noisy, and uh, sometimes uh, they would mistakenly highlight uh, some of the background pixels. <coughs> uh, similarly, for the second example, for the conduit floor, or generated heat map in the second column, <coughs> could highlight both the dominant one in the center of the image as well as the smaller one in the bottom right corner of the image. We can also generate an explanation heat map for different scene architectures. For example, for this scale input, we can generate an explanation for the 19 layer vision light, the 18 layer, Rest net as well as the OLS net. And through the visualization, we can know that the different architectures make use of different evidence for prediction. And the information could help us to capture the pros and cons of different architectures. And based on the insights from the explanation, and it could help us to design a better architecture. So after introducing how can we generate a feasible and ensemble explanation for predictions made by same model, I will then introduce how can we generate a feasible explanation for predictions made by our model. Different from the same model as we introduced in last part, the R model, it is a recurrent architecture and uh, the information is processed not in a feedforward way. And uh, besides, the R unit could uh, uh, come in different formats. For example, we have the DRU unit, we have the RSTM unit. We can also append the two uh, units together to have the bidirectional version. For example, we have the bidirectional DRU as well as the bidirectional RSTM. Uh, similar to the explanation for predictions made by the same model, uh, the key factors for predictions um, uh, made by our model is that we have a pre-trained R model and we have one uh, specific input test. After uh, feeding this input uh, test to the pre-trained R model, the model will give us the prediction Y. So the goal of the explanation for 
uh, predictions made by the R model uh, to uh, highlight the most important evidence within the input. And the final model explanation will be illustrated in the format of heat map where a deep color in the heat map indicates a higher current score for the model prediction. So we also take a motivation from the information flowing process from the R model. And here, the information will flow from feature S1 to all the way to the feature capital T uh, to the last time step. So the insights from the information flowing process of R model is that uh, there is evidence updating from time step T minus one to time step T. And uh, there are also the evidence getting as the information flows from time step T plus one to the final time step uh, capital T. So through modeling the information flowing process through the R model, we can derive a more faithful explanation. So consider uh, this uh, example. We can take out the part corresponding to time step t minus one to time step t. So we propose an abstracted RN updating rule. Ht equals FRT uh, times Ht minus one plus Ht tilde. So here, the symbol FRT means that uh, there is only partial evidence is brought from last time step t minus one to the current time step t. Will the other important symbol HT tilde, it equals GST. It uh, denotes the evidence that uh, uh, the R model obtains under the current time step t. So some model, some R units follow these rules uh, exactly, such as the GIU unit. Will some other uh, R units follow this rule approximately, such as RSTM? So based on this uh, proposed uh, abstracted R updating rule, we also have uh, the R model prediction here, uh, Z equals W times H capital T. Here Z means the logic layer. So after the logic layer Z, we have the salt mass operation and we can eventually get the model prediction Y. We want to decompose the logic layer uh, corresponding to the target category C under the final decomposition for the model prediction in the logic layer is as follows. So it contains two essential elements. The first part is the hidden state vector HT, while the second important part is the updating vector FRT. So we can take out the item uh, corresponding to time step T in order to get the world level explanation. Here, if we want to know the contribution of a word of feature as T towards the model prediction as Z or Y. So we have the final, uh, the final uh, formulation uh, for this uh, contributing score of feature as T towards the model prediction as follows. So within the square bracket, there are two important uh, uh, factors so the first one, HT uh, minus FRT times HT minus one. So it could denote the evidence updating from last time step at T minus one to the current time step T. Will the second term within the square bracket, it denotes the evidence forgetting as the information flows from time step T plus one to the final time step capital T. So we can see that the our formulation is very intuitive. It um, matches very well with our 
human understanding was a uh, base model. So because uh, our proposed method is a uh, decomposition based method, so if we want to know the freeze level explanation for the model prediction, for example, we want to know the contribution of freeze ranging from time step Q to time step R. We want to know the contribution of this phrase towards the final model prediction. We can uh, sum up the atoms within this uh, uh, time uh, range and eventually the final formulation uh, for the contributing score for this phrase SA is given as follows. So its format is very similar to the world level explanation. So within the square bracket, it also contains two important terms. The first term could denote the evidence updating from time step Q uh, minus one to time step R, while the second term within the square bracket could denote the evidence forgetting from time step R plus one to the final time step capital T. And uh, this kind of explanation is also very intuitive to us humans. Uh, I will show how can we apply the proposed method to different R units here. I illustrate using the DRU unit, the original hidden state vector updating rule for DRU is uh, denoted using four equations. We can only uh, look at the last equation. We can see that uh, it uh, matches very well for the proposed uh, updating rule. And uh, if we want to know the freeze level explanation for this uh, GIU model prediction and uh, the final formulation for it given as follows, we only need to replace the alpha t within the GIU, uh, uh, replace alpha t with the GRU updating gate vector mu t in order to get the freeze level explanation. So uh, go to the experiment part. So for this uh, input uh, test, the final things are one, but it grows tedious. So we can train three different R models and these three R models will give different predictions for this input. For example, for the GIU model, it gives a, a slightly positive prediction, and the confidence is uh, around 51%. Uh, in contrast, for RCM, it gives a strong positive prediction, and uh, the confidence is uh, 96%. For the third model, the bidirectional GIU, it gives a slightly a negative prediction. So, why this uh, three uh, different iron architectures uh, gives uh, different predictions for the same input. So we can generate an uh, explanation heat map for this input test. For this uh, explanation heat map, the green color denotes the positive contributing score, while the red color denotes the negative contributing score. For the first model, the GIU, we can see that the model gives the words a fun and a fight the positive current score will for the world TDRs, the negative current score. The summation uh, for the uh, positive and negative are very similar. So it could explain the slightly positive prediction. For the second model, the RSTM, the model gives more words fight, fun, and growth the positive contribution score comparing to the negative ones, including sense and TDRs. So it could explain more why the model will give a strong positive prediction for this input. For the third one, the model gives more words a negative contribution score, including the word growth and TDRs, but uh, comparing to the word fun, and uh, this could explain why the model gives a negative prediction for this input test. So the takeaway is that all proposed methods could uh, accurately reflect uh, the prediction score of different architectures. So 
So we also evaluate the faithfulness score for the generated explanations. The idea is that we want to delete the phrase with the highest correct score. If we could observe a higher accuracy drop, if we uh, fed the perturbed input to the original R model, it means that the generated explanation is more faithful to the uh, original R model. So we compare the proposed method with uh, three uh, baseline methods and uh, for three different R architectures, including GRU, RCM, and uh, bad GRU. The last row is the result for the proposed method. We can see that it is much higher comparing to the three baseline methods. It means that uh, the proposed method has a higher fidelity to the original uh, decision making process of the R model. Uh, after introducing how can we generate uh, explanations for predictions made uh, by different uh, D models. In this part of talk, I will introduce how can we make use of explainability as a debugging tool in order to improve the performance of the models, including how can we improve the fairness of the model, as well as how can we improve the robustness and the generalization ability of the models. So we can make use of explainability and debugging too. So in the first example, this is a binary Husky and Wolf classification task for the figure A. Uh, this is a Husky image, but the model mistakenly classified it as a wolf. So what's the reason? So in figure B, the explanation uh, could tell the user that the model will mainly pay attention to the evidence uh, in the background part of this image, the snow part. It, uh, uh, associate the uh, snow with uh, the wolf. Similarly, for the second example, this is an image caption example. And uh, for this input uh, image, the model gives the caption a young boy is a swaying a tennis uh, racket. Actually, this is a female. So, through generating explanation in figure, in the second figure, we can see that the D model look at uh, the wrong locations when generating the company word boy. So the takeaway is that uh, in many cases, uh, the explanations from the DNA model are not always reasonable to us humans. So our solution is to regularize the DNA model in order to achieve better performance. Because in the real world applications, there are usually will be abundant domain knowledge available. And we could do either the explicit or the implicit regularization in order to encourage the model to make the right prediction by making use of the correct evidence. So eventually, we could have a better fairness and a better generalization performance. So I will introduce how can we uh, make use of this uh, finding to improve the fairness of the uh, DNA models. So currently, uh, many of the deep neural networks have been used in the high-stake applications, including criminal justice, employment, loan approval, and uh, credit scoring. For many of these applications, the DNA model could show biases towards certain demographic groups such as for females and African Americans. So uh, it is desirable to propose mitigation solutions. So we can uh, use uh, the explainability and debugging tool. Here we take uh, the test-based uh, sentiment classification task as an example. So for this input uh, test, uh, this situation uh, makes uh, this woman feel irritated. The model gives an anger prediction. So we can generate uh, the explanation hitman. And through the visualization, we can see that uh, the model 
we will highlight both the word uh, woman and the word uh, irritated. Similarly, for the other two examples, uh, the conversation with my sister was amazing and another one. And uh, we can see that uh, the explanation we will highlight the fairness uh, sensitive feature, sister and boyfriend. It means that uh, the DNA model has associated the protective attributes with a certain class labels. And uh, this eventually will result in the bias and uh, discrimination of the models. So uh, this uh, observation can also be observed in other applications. For example, for the zip code and uh, through the zip code, we could uh, infer the race for different uh, demographics. And uh, when, uh, for image classification, and uh, the, uh, there could be sensitive pixels through the pixels we can infer the gender for the image. So the explainability analysis indicates that the pretending model will highly rely on the fairness of sensitive feature for prediction. So our proposed sol solution is to regularize the model explanation. So it is achieved using two steps. In the first step, we will uh, train a bias only teacher network in figure A. In figure A, and uh, for this uh, bias only teacher network, we will encourage it to make a use of only the fairness sensitive information for prediction. And uh, for this example, the model will pay attention to the uh, word woman for prediction. So in the second step, uh, we propose to uh, counter teach the device model, we want to train a device model where its explanation is orthogonal to the explanation for the bias only teacher network. Before mitigation for figure B, uh, we can see that the model will highlight both the word woman and the irritated. So after mitigation in figure C, the model will put a uh, surprise the uh, explanation for woman. And uh, it will uh, uh, only uh, make use of the feature irritated for prediction. So we compare the proposed methods with uh, several uh, baseline methods. And uh, we will uh, illustrate the results for the undoubt uh, data set using two evaluation metrics, demographic parity, as well as the equality or odds. So, for both metrics, through the explanation results, we can see that the proposed method defined, it could achieve the best accuracy and the utility trade-off. Besides, we can also uh, visualize the explanations before and after mitigation. So before mitigation in figure A, and uh, this model will pay a uh, high attention to the fairness of sensitive feature, the relationship equals husband, as well as the sex equals male. After mitigation in figure B and the uh, all proposed model could uh, help the DNA model to switch its attention to more task relevant features. So besides uh, uh, making use of explainability to improve the fairness of the models, we can also make use of explainability to improve the robustness and the generalization ability for the models. Here we consider the natural language understanding task. And for this task, we have two branch of inputs, the premise and the hypothesis. The goal is to infer the relation between the premise and hypothesis to know whether the relation is contradiction Entailments or neutral. So we apply a broad based model. So input for this model is the premise plus the SP signal plus the hypothesis. Our model is the broad encoder plus a simple Kavikian height. After fine tuning this model on this uh, NLU task, we can get the final 
model prediction. So we are wondering for this high level natural language assignment task, what have been learned inside of the RU models? In order to answer uh, this question, we can make use of explainability as a debugging tool. And uh, here, uh, we illustrate uh, the explanations uh, by making use of the integrated gradient as explanation method. So through the visualization, we can say that uh, there are two levels of biases captured by the uh, broad-based array model. Firstly, uh, we, all, we have two branches of input, premise and hypothesis. We can say that uh, the broad-based array model will only pay attention to the hypothesis rather than pay attention to both premise and hypothesis. And uh, secondly, if we only look at uh, the uh, hypothesis, we can see that the model will pay high attention to some specific uh, unigram and the backgrounds. It means that the model has captured some superior correlation between these simple unigram and backgrounds with class labels. So uh, if we want to apply this model to more challenging data set, for example, if we apply to uh, the OD test set, the model, the accuracy would uh, drop a lot. So we propose uh, to make use of the long tail phenomena to explain this behavior. So the idea is that the training feature within the whole training set can be modeled as a long tail uh, distribution, where for the header of the distribution, it contains many shortcut features. For example, it contains uh, stop words, numbers, and the negation words. These kind of features, they are highly correlated with certain class labels, but they have very low information entropy. So we can compare the data set, the long tail distribution with the model explanation. So the observation is that the broad-based model has a high preference for the height of the long tail distribution for prediction. For example, if we want to calculate the ratio of the uh, top one word belong to the height of the distribution, the ratio is around 25%. If we relax it to the top two words, so the ratio is around 51%. It means that uh, there is a high preference for the height of the distribution for prediction. So we also propose a mitigation solution in order to improve the robustness and the generalization ability for the broad-based error model. The observation is that the broad-based error model will give the overconfident prediction for samples with a large bias degree. So we propose metrics to quantify the shortcut degree or the bias degree of each training sample. So based on this metric, we can smooth the South math probability from the uh, teacher model. And then we propose the self-knowledge articulation in order to encourage the diverse model to learn from the smooth the South math probability uh, vector. And uh, in this way, we can disencourage the model to give the overconfident predictions for samples with the large shortcut degree in order to improve the robustness and the generalization ability for the first based array model. So we compare the robustness performance of the proposed method with uh, four baseline methods. Here, the last row is the result for the proposed method. And we can say that uh, it could improve the performance on the two and the several test set, the hard test set, as well as the highest test set. Well, at the same time, it uh, does not uh, sacrifice the performance on the original ID development site. 
We also compare the explanation before and after mitigation. So before mitigation, the model will only pay attention to the hypothesis as well as some specific uh, unigram within the hypothesis, the word vacant. After mitigation, in the second row, I propose the method to the current model to pay attention to both premise and hypothesis. And the current model to make use of the similarity between the premise and the hypothesis to lead to the entailment prediction. Uh, to summarize, in this talk, I have introduced the uh, how can we pro, uh, propose uh, explanation for pre-trained the uh, same model as well as pre-trained R model. So in the second part, I have introduced how can we make use of explainability and the debugging to, to improve the performance of the deep neural networks, uh, including how can we improve the fairness performance as well as how can we improve the generalization and the robustness of the uh, deeper neural networks? So in future, I plan to further uh, apply explainability for downstream applications by making use of explainability as a debugging tool. For example, we can uh, make use of explainability to study the parameter redundancy and uh, to design the network compression framework. We can also make use of explainability to study the shortcut learning uh, phenomena and uh, make use of it to uh, the task of posing attack for difficult defense as well as many other applications. And uh, in general, uh, my research topic belongs to the uh, area of responsible AI. I want to continue my research on the three key components, including the model explainability, the fairness, and the robustness. In addition, I also want to explore other key areas of responsible AI, including the privacy and the safety. Besides the kind of fundamental research, I also want to uh, explore two applications the health informatics and the NLP. So I want to design the responsible health uh, informatics and the responsible NLP applications. For example, for explainability, we can propose the post hoc explanations. So we can design the interpreter model for these two applications. We can also make use of explainability and debugging to, to uh, diagnose uh, the models. For fairness, we can probe the existing D models. We can also characterize the reason for bias for these uh, two applications. We can also uh, make a, a proposed mitigation solutions to improve the fairness for these two applications. And lastly, for robustness. For example, uh, in many cases, applications, the input data could have noise. How can we improve the model robustness in this scenario? And uh, there also could be the domain shift. For example, if we apply the model to another hospital, how can we address this uh, domain shift problem? And uh, sometimes uh, there could also be the problem of shortcut learning. And uh, there also be the multi-model scenario. How can we improve the model robustness in these many um, uh, uh, scenarios? And lastly, I want to uh, thank uh, the committee members, the data lab members, as well as the funding agencies. And uh, thank you all for attending this uh, talk. And uh, I would be happy to uh, take any uh, questions. Yeah, so, so thank you very much for a very interesting and excellent talk. Um, do we have any questions from the from the audience? Everyone. Yeah, uh, I have a couple of uh, of uh, questions. Basically, can, can you go back to the slide eighteen? Okay. Uh, yeah, slide eighteen. So when you talk about uh, the explanations, right? Um, yeah, uh, eighteen. So uh, one one more slide. 
uh, 17, right? 17, uh, 17. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay, so, um, so here, like the first questions I have is, uh, I'm wondering, um, in any cases that your mechanism doesn't gen, uh, doesn't generate good explanations? In, uh, in which scenario, uh, your, your basically proposed model will not generate uh, good explanations? Uh, so, uh, your question is in what kind of scenarios? So my proposed method could not generate a good explanations. Yeah, basically your proposed model, yeah. Um, and uh, because our proposed uh, model is an optimization uh, based the method, and uh, there could be uh, several scenarios. So one scenario is that uh, the model confidence is, is very low. For example, uh, if the model confidence for one specific input is very low, it's, it's not a, uh, uh, it is much lower comparing to, for example, a value of 0 0.9. And in that scenario, uh, the optimization could be very hard. And uh, in that case, um, it might uh, generate uh, some poor results. And uh, this is a scenario uh, where my proposed model uh, might not uh, generate good results. Yeah, OK, thank you. So basically, it depends on the confidence of the of the of the model. So in in in, in that case, right? Uh, I, I'm you know like uh, what is the significant impact of your explanations model? Because uh, when the when when the model is very uh, is very confident, then all the explanations model can generate good uh, good heat map and good explanations too. So so what is the impact of of your proposed approach and, and how you basically quantify the the, the improvement, right? So, is there any quantitative measure that measure the improvement of your model over existing work in different scenario? You know, when the model have low confidence and until the model have very high confidence. Do you have that kind of analysis? Ah, uh, yes, and uh, I did not introduce the quantitative analysis here, but we uh, we did have the analysis, and uh, for example, we propose metrics to quantify two important uh, factors for explanation. One is the model explainability, while the other one is the faithfulness score for the model explainability. So for uh, the first one, the explainability, it uh, measures uh, how good is the model explanation for the humans. And for the second one, for the faithfulness or the fidelity score, it measures uh, how faithful is the generated explanations to the original uh, DNA model decision making process. And uh, so, based on these two metrics, uh, our proposed method is uh, better comparing to uh, some of the baseline methods. So, so you have, you, you have a theoretical analysis saying that uh, if your model achieves a, a higher such, certain measure, then you have theoretical proof that your model will have a better explanation to existing work or is still a, quan a qualitative measure? Uh, it is uh, uh, a quantitative measure. And, uh, and the Co qualitative is, measure, right? Uh, it's, yes. it's a qualitative, not, not quantitative, right? Uh, it, it's quantitative. It's a numer numerical scores. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, okay. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, right. so I, I, I may look into that more. Um, for the uh, slide number 28, um, uh, you know, like, uh, how, how could your model basically handle, um, you know, like a sarcasm in, in predict, in predicting, you know, positive contribution or negative contributions? So sarcasm is very complicated, right? You know, like, uh, uh you know, like, uh, emotion expressions, right? So is your model cover that, like, you know, sarcasm scenario as well? Uh, and uh, uh, I would say that uh, that scenario is much harder comparing to sentiment an analysis, and uh, and uh, it could work in that scenario as well. Um, no, I mean like yeah, I mean it's it's very similar. Like you predict the positive and negative with the score over there, so it's kind of similar to to uh, you know like uh, um, 
Um, yeah, so I'm just wondering whether you still generate the a good prediction for the positive negative contribution given Karpagasakazam sentence or not. Ah, yes, yes, yeah. yes, uh, yes. Yes or no, like have you tested? Um, we didn't test, but uh, uh, my guess is a uh, yes. And uh, why, uh, why? Uh, and uh, as you mentioned, uh, these two applications are uh, um, and that one with um, uh, the current one analysis is very similar, and uh, there is uh, the positive and the negative, and uh, uh, sentiment or uh, uh, computer world, and uh, I would say these two applications, uh, they are somewhat similar, and uh, so yes, okay, I, I yeah. yeah. Thank you. And I have the last question before I, uh, you know, like all, uh, everyone else can ask. Basically, I, I'm sorry for asking lots of questions. Um, uh, when, when you uh, talk about the, the 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 future work, right? You you, you trying to uh, have one connection between the explanations with uh, poisoning attack. So that is an uh, interesting connection, though. Um, can, can you go there? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, like poisoning attack. And you know, like uh, security there, like defect defenses and and one adversarial vulnerability and so on. So I'm I'm wondering, you know, like uh, do do you know what is uh the the security and privacy risk of explain explanations generated by by uh, you know uh, explainable model? So when you generate something, basically trying to explain the model, basically is expose the data to the outsider, right? So, so oh, yes. what what did the yeah what did the privacy security risk over there in using the explanations? Ah uh, yes, and uh, there are uh, several recent papers that mentioned that uh, based on the explanations as well as the model predictions, so we can reconstruct the original uh, DM model. So it uh, could have this kind of security issue if we expose all the explanations to the end users and. Uh, uh, and it could also impose uh, some private information. And uh, so there are some uh, direction to combine explanation and privacy. Yeah, so, so how, okay, so, uh, uh, so, so we mean like uh, when you use the explanation to uh, address, address these kind of problems, you have to be careful with the uh, privacy security risk of the explanation as well, right? It's not like oh, yes. simply, it's not simply directly use of the explanation and you can address the problems. Ah, oh, yes, yes, of okay. course, yes. Yeah, thank you. I think like uh, I have all of uh, that's my questions. Are there any questions from the audience? Uh, yes, uh, hi, I, I, I didn't find a way to raise the hand, so I just jump in, is that okay? What a question. Yeah, yeah, please, please feel free. Yeah, please. Okay, so uh, so my name is Christophoros. Christophoros, I'm, I'm a professor at computer science uh, department at St. John's University. So my question has to do with uh, confounding factors. So confounding factors is an issue with deep neural networks in the case where you have the labels, but then you have other factors. If, if you're trying to understand, let's say, uh, in the context of neuroimaging, an underlying uh, cognitive process in, 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 in the brain and what contributes to a particular area, you would like to identify not only the class, if, if something is class A or class B, but rather um, what, what is the underlying source of that discriminability. So uh, my understanding from what you presented here is that you are um, kind of evidence-based uh, analysis identify spatial locations in images or locations in, in, in text. Would that be sufficient to uh, attribute uh, which confounding factor contributes towards the uh, classification decision of the classifier? I, I, I don't know if, if I completely explained the, the question, but... Um, uh, the idea is, would the evidence-based uh, analysis be able to differentiate, let's say, if differences between um, two groups of people, let's say dyslectics and non-dyslectics, are caused by uh, the a true brain activity that relates to reading, in, in, in a sense, or 
uh, it might be due to other factors because of the errors in measurement or the tools that we are used to, to measure something? Uh, yes, we could do that. But uh, uh, given from the simple uh, image classification or natural level processing applications, uh, and for the many applications you mentioned, we need to combine the domain knowledge from the domain experts and to combine the explanation from the model as well as the domain knowledge from the experts in order to achieve that goal. Oh, yes, we, we can do that, yes. So, I mean, so, like, so yeah, yeah. I, 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 think like, uh, I think like uh, the, the, the question is uh, just based on empirical evidence, right? It wouldn't be enough to justify, you know, like we need a theoretical analysis or understanding really, uh, you know, like uh, uh, ensure that the explanations will will capture the the real contents in the image, given the confounding factors or given the uncertainty in the in a real world scenario. Uh, and, 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 and contextual information as well. It's not, uh, I, I think like like empirical based um, explanation wouldn't be enough to basically. Uh, uh, yes, yes, I agree. So when you to combine the empirical analysis with this uh, theoretical analysis, so uh, both of them are needed in order to analyze uh, this uh, confounding problem. And uh, yes, uh, if uh, the empirical analysis might not be sufficient in some applications. Yeah, agree, like, agree like with, autonomous yes. system. Yeah, uh, like yes, autonomous yes. system, you know, like nobody really look into though <laughs> and then like make the decision is too slow basically, right? Uh, yes, yes. Um, yeah, I think like, is there any other questions from the audience or like we are running out of time? Uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to uh, Monan uh, through, through email. Okay, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think like uh, that is all for today. Yeah. Thank you everyone for joining.